Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to be talking about the 3D cursor. And it seems very strange at first if you've never used one, but it's actually very powerful. And I want to show you some tips and tricks on kind of a few ways that you can use this when you're designing. So it's right here in the center. It's kind of hard to see. So if you want to switch from your item tab, you can go to view. And if you can't see it again, you can hit in on your keyboard and you should see 3D cursor, this little guy right here under view and you can move your 3D cursor around. This is the very slow way to do it. You know, if you wanted to precisely place your 3D cursor to somewhere on your mesh. But what I like to do is just shift right click. So everybody shift right click and it's actually snapping the 3D cursor to your Suzanne geometry here. So shift right click and just Get in the practice of shift right clicking. We're going to do this quite often. And the reason this is useful is say we wanted to add something to the top of Suzanne's head. I could say, hey, I want to shift right click right here and let's add a new object. Make sure you're in flexible design and we'll do shift A to add a, let's say a cylinder. So now we've got a cylinder. Yours may come in a very small, but that's okay. You can just crank it up. Vertices can say the same here. Um, that is really just, you know, the number of cuts that are, you know, segments or polygons or faces that are making up that design. So you can take that up as a higher low as you want. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it at 32. And then you can change the radius to anything that you think is cool. But essentially we're just making a little hat here for Suzanne. Um, and we use the 3D cursor to tell Blender, hey, wherever the 3D cursor is and wherever I add an object, that's where I want you to be spawned or created. So let's switch back to look dev and say we wanted to put something here. We can shift right click, shift A and just add another shape. It doesn't matter, we're just gonna delete them anyways, but just add an icosphere. So now we've got a little icosphere right there, placed right where we wanted to, and it's just a very powerful skill to have as a designer. And so we don't really need these, uh, so let's just click on these and hit X to delete, or you can come over here on your icosphere and hit X to delete it. And now let's select our Suzanne monkey. And notice when we select her, there's this little orange dot right here and that's the origin point and usually when you're rotating or scaling blender is doing all those calculations in regards to this little origin point here it's just floating in the middle of suzanne's head so say if we did r to rotate it's going to actually rotate around that origin point and if we did x it's going to rotate right there where that origin point is but sometimes when we're designing we want to be able to quickly change maybe we want to keep the origin point there but we want to rotate maybe near the top of the head here so what we can use is the 3d cursor yes and you just right, shift right click to somewhere you know say hey i want to rotate more like up here uh, near the top of her head. And then we can come up here and switch our pivot orientation. And so usually it's just gonna be set to active element, which is that little guy here, our little origin point. Uh, but we can also change it to 3D cursor. And now if you hit R to rotate and then hit X, it's actually rotating around that 3D cursor but our origin point is still you know, where we may want it. So that is very powerful and quick and very helpful just while you're designing. So I'm just gonna hit escape. And another cool thing that you can do is use the 3D cursor while you're in edit mode. And we haven't really talked too much about edit mode, but you're really just gonna be using object and edit mode a lot. We're just gonna be ping ponging back and forth uh, to edit mode. So you can switch to edit mode up in the top left here with edit mode. Or what I like to do and what I want you to get used to doing is hitting tab on your keyboard and you will quickly, quickly flick back and forth into those two modes. So that's what most Blender users do. There's also control tab if you wanna get extra fancy and you have this little pie menu where you can switch back and forth. Um, so that's more helpful if you're sculpting. So you can flip through these different ones or if you're animating, you may use some of these, but as 3D print designers, we will use these. And that again is alt tab. So what's cool about the 3D cursor while you're in edit mode is that you can you know, click on certain little points here and we can do shift S and this is kind of a pie menu for the 3D cursor. So you're gonna do shift S lots or very often. And what this bottom one down here is saying is saying, hey Blender, I want you to put the 3D cursor to the place I have selected, this little, that little dot I selected earlier. So go ahead and hit this bottom one, cursor to selected, bloop. And the 3D cursor jumped from here to here because we had selected. So I want you to select another one, do shift S 
cursor to selected and just kind of move your 3D cursor around your object. And we're gonna do this sometimes, you know, while we're designing. So I just want you to feel kind of comfortable with moving your 3D cursor while you're in edit mode. Another cool thing is say if we wanted to put the uh, cursor right here in the middle of like all this right here, we could just click on one of our little dots here, hold shift on our keyboard and select another one. And we can do the same thing, shift S and cursor to selected. But since we have two points selected, it's actually going to do it in the middle of that. So cursor to selected, bloop, and there we go. We have our cursor in the middle of those two. So another very helpful trick that you can use um, with the edit mode and the 3D cursor. And the last thing I really wanna show you is moving your origin point. So sometimes when you're designing more advanced things, we want to move this little origin point permanently or for a second or two to just put it in a new place. And you can use a 3D cursor um, but to do that. So since we have the cursor right there in the middle of the bottom of the head, I'm gonna switch back to object mode. Again, you can just do tab. And then there's this drop down object and you can set the origin to the 3D cursor. And we use this quite often. So watch what happens when we click this. The little orange dot that was in the middle of Suzanne's head is now popped right to the bottom of her head. So now if we were back to our default, which is active element, and we clicked on Suzanne and we rotate, now we're rotating right around our little origin point. So we can hit X and drop that. So, you know, no matter where our 3D cursor is, we can still always rotate at that bottom space. So uh, last thing I wanna leave you with, uh, I know that's a lot to learn with a 3D cursor, but it's just a really powerful tool and I wanted you to be aware of different things that it can do. Uh, but if you ever wanna just reset it, you can do Shift S again and cursor to world origin. Bloop. And now it's relocated back to the center. So any new objects you make are gonna be created right there in the center of your Blender scene. And so now we've got the 3D cursor set back to the origin. Let's actually move our origin point back to where it originally was. And we can just do set origin to 3D cursor. Bloop. And there we go. Let's go ahead and jump in the next lesson where we're gonna talk about how to move your view around with a three button mouse. Let's get on it.